Good morning, Brewick Court School. What are you going to do today? Learn, enjoy, succeed. It's Friday the 12th of June. Remember, we're not going to do celebration assembly today. We'll give out your certificates and things when we do assembly on Monday. Today, we're going to talk about somebody's birthday, a very special person called Anne Frank, and we'll come on to that in a minute. But we have got a quiz. So are you ready? You might want some paper, you might not, that's entirely up to you. Five questions, general knowledge. Here we go. Question number one. What is the name of the fiery liquid that flows from a volcano? I remember doing some work on this with Willow class, so they should definitely know. Number two. What type of food do penguins eat? I bet you've been to the zoo and seen them. What do they feed them? Can you remember? All right, question three. What are the main two colours on the Spanish flag? I'm sure you will have seen the Spanish flag in your uh, Spanish lessons with Miss McFetridge, so have a think and see if you can remember. Question four. Who is married to Prince Harry? So Prince Harry is Prince Charles's youngest son. He's just moved away from England. Don't know if that gives you a clue or not really. All right, number four. Nope, done number four. Number five. What colour belt does a martial arts expert wear? All right, there's your five questions. Have another look. See if you can get your answers ready for when we go through them at the end. And before we go on to our famous person's birthday today, we need to say happy birthday to Felicity Brown. Happy birthday, Felicity. We hope you have a really lovely day. Felicity, I was remembering that last year we celebrated your birthday over at um, Riverside when we were in the hall and we were talking about why you were called Felicity. And I thought it was one reason and Alfie thought it was another reason and Josh thought it was another reason. So maybe you'll be able to find out today. Ask mum and dad. So happy Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Felicity, happy birthday to you. Hope you have a wonderful day. Right then, let's find out about Anne Frank. So Anne Frank is not alive anymore and we'll find out a little bit about that. She died um, in the, during the war, during the Second World War. This is a picture of her and if she was alive today she would be 91 years old so pretty old i think okay and she was a very famous person and we're going to find out what was special about her and what made her famous and i'm going to use some really great clips to uh, demonstrate that to you it's much more interesting to listen to somebody else explaining this to you rather than me and they're going to do a much better job of it so this is a news round special um, that was produced this time last year when it was anne franks would have been her 90th birthday so we're not going to listen to the whole thing because it's half an hour long but i'd just like to to play you some short snippets because I think that will give you a really good understanding and some information about who Anne Frank was and why she's so important. Here we go. Hi, I'm Nazia. This week through Holocaust Memorial Day, we remember the millions of people who were murdered by the Nazis during World War II. The programme you're about to watch is about one person's Holocaust story. And although it's sad, it's important to remember so that such awful things never happen again. This is the story of an ordinary 13 year old girl with lots of teenagers kept a diary. I hope I'll be able to confide everything to you, as I've never been able to confide in anyone. And I hope you'll be a great source of comfort and support. But in the weeks after she started writing her diary, the author's life completely changed. She went from being a normal teenager into a life in hiding, away from the people who wanted to murder her family. The girl's name is Anne Frank. Okay.
Okay, so Anne Frank was alive during World War II. She was 13 when the war started, so she was just a little bit older than Grandma Hilda, who we interviewed to find out all about the war, and not that much older than a lot of you, actually. She would have just been kind of uh, newly into secondary school type age, really. And Anne decided that she would keep a diary. And this diary proved to be really interesting for people to be able to read afterwards as a great way of finding out what life was like for people who lived through that terrible time during the war. Anne Frank is one of the most famous writers and diarists the world has ever seen. Her book has sold millions of copies worldwide. Anne's diary covers two years during World War II when her and her family had to go into hiding from the Nazis. But whilst Anne is famous for her life here in the Netherlands, she was born in Frankfurt, Germany. Anne was the youngest child of mum Edith, dad Otto and was sister to Margot. The Franks were proud Germans and Jews. In 1933, when Anne was just three, Adolf Hitler came to power in Germany and his party, the Nazis, told Germans that Jews were the enemies of the people. So the Franks, like thousands of other German Jews, made the decision that they needed to get out of the country. For their new home, they chose Amsterdam, where they thought they'd be safe. The Franks moved to this apartment block in an area called Moedeplan, just a few minutes away from the centre of Amsterdam. And actually, if you go to Amsterdam now, you can go and visit the house where they lived. And we're going to find out a little bit more about what became very special about the place that they lived. As part of World War II, Nazi Germany had invaded the Netherlands and the Nazis set about making life difficult for the country's Jewish residents. By 1942, when Anne received her diary, the Nazis had begun sending some Dutch Jews from their homes to concentration camps, where they'd face horrendous conditions or death. Just weeks after Anne started writing her diary, her family received one of these. It was a call-up notice from the Nazis for Anne's sister, Margot. It told the Franks that Margot should report to them ready to be sent to a work camp somewhere in Germany. No because in order to protect Anne's sister Margot, the family decide that they need to go into hiding so that the Nazis can't find them and can't take her sister away. The family made their way here to this building in the centre of Amsterdam. It was home to Otto's business. The Franks climbed this staircase, probably not realising they'd seen the outside world for the last time in years. The stairs led to a set of rooms above Otto's warehouse that he'd been secretly furnishing, creating a small annex flat concealed from the outside world. With the entrance hidden by this bookcase, the secret annex would go on to be their hiding place for the next two years. Of course, we can't have a look out the window or go outside. And we have to be quiet so that the people downstairs can't hear us. To avoid discovery by workers in the warehouse below, during business hours, flushing the toilet and running water was banned and walking around was to be kept to a minimum. Anne had to keep herself occupied with schoolwork, reading, and of course, her diary. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of information about the kind of life that Anne lived and why she was such an important person. Unfortunately, Anne was, a bit, the family were eventually discovered and um, Anne was taken to a concentration camp and she did die. But afterwards, her father survived and he found her diary and he published it and it became one of the most famous books and the most famous diaries ever written because it shows such an important part of history and what happens to people. And extracts from the diary, you can buy it and read it as a book actually, which I've done. It's a really, really interesting read, um, but I'm just going to share some quotes with you today. So have a listen to one of the things that she says early on in the diary. 
writing in a diary is a really strange experience for someone like me, not only because I've never written anything before, but also because it seems to me that later on neither I nor anyone else will be interested in the musings of a 13-year-old schoolgirl. Oh well, it doesn't matter. I feel like writing. So it's interesting, isn't it, to find out that she wasn't writing because she wanted to be famous and for everybody to read it. She was just writing because it made her feel better to write and she really enjoyed it. And then in actual fact, that turned out to be a wonderful thing because she had so much interesting information and knowledge to share with other people. And actually, we're going to look at some of the things that she wrote in her diary in a minute, because the other thing that you'll find out is that she was very wise for a 13 year old. Okay, I'd like to share with you next some of a guided tour of the annex where they lived so you can see what it would have been like for her. The place that the Frank family, the Vandells, as well as Mr. Dussel called home for two years while in hiding. From the front of the building, it looks like a pretty average business of the time. But the secret annex is actually a separate building in a way. It just has a kind of breezeway between the two buildings. The entrance into the secret annex starts as you go up this staircase that leads to the second floor. Then at the end of the hallway, you go through this door which leads you into the breezeway between the two buildings. This is the movable bookcase that leads you into the secret annex. Now if you move the bookcase and go through this door, then you are met with three places that you could turn. To the left, this is where the Franks live and sit during each day. And then to the right, there's the WC or the bathroom. We will start off by going to the Franks room. So if we go through this door, This is the room where Mrs. and Mr. Frank sleep as well as where the Frank family sits during the quiet portion of the day. Now if we go into this door over here, we will be led into Anne's room which she also shared with Mr. Dussel. Here you can see Mr. Dussel's bed. And this is Anne's bed, which has all of her celebrities above it on the wall. So you can see that they had a really, really tiny space. They weren't allowed to go outside. They weren't even allowed to look out of the window in case anybody uh, realized that they were there. And they lived like that for two years. And while they were there, Anne wrote in her diary every day. I'd like to share with you some of the quotes from Anne's diary that show what a lovely person she was and how clever she was and how much she understood about the world and what a positive attitude she had considering what a difficult time she was having, how worried they would have been the whole time about being found out, how bored she would have been not being able to go outside. This is one of the things that she said, look, no one has ever become poor by giving. Isn't that a nice thing to say? And actually, you know, people would have been rationed in those days and so the people who were helping them had to share their food with them so they wouldn't have had very much at all. But Anne lived in surrounded by people who were looking after her and were looking after each other. So actually there's always some good that can come out of these terrible situations and that's one of the things that it made Anne realise that actually it's always a good thing to do things to help others. In spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. So even though she knew that her life was in danger and that all these terrible things were happening with the war going on in the world, she still genuinely believed that everybody was good deep in their heart. Isn't that wonderful to have such a positive outlook on life? I don't think of all the misery, but of the beauty that still remains. So again, showing what a positive outlook she managed to have in what was a really difficult and challenging situation for her and her family. What a wonderful thought it is that some of the best days of our lives haven't even happened yet. 
So again, showing what a wonderful, positive attitude Anne Frank had and how resilient she managed to be through a really, really difficult time. So a very inspirational person, a hero, I would say, and actually fantastic that she could be a hero when she was only 13 years old. How wonderful. Okay then, would you like the answers to today's quiz? Oh look, they've all flashed up, but I will read them through for you. What is the name of the fiery liquid that flows from a volcano? Lava. What type of food do penguins eat? Fish. What are the main two colours in the Spanish flag? Yellow and red. Who is married to Prince Harry? Meghan Markle, who is also now known as Duchess of Sussex. And number five, what colour belt does a martial arts expert wear? Black. Well done for having a go. Hope you managed to get some of those right. And if you didn't, then that's good, isn't it? Because it means that you've learnt something today in assembly, which is even better, I think, than knowing all the answers to start with. Okay then, we are going to finish with a song and we're going to have another go at One Call Away. Now, I've been really trying hard to learn this, it's not easy. I would suggest that instead of looking at me, you watch the experts on the screen who are much better at this than I am. Call away, I'll be there to save the day. Superman got nothing on me I'm only one call away Call me baby if you need a friend I just want to give you love Come on, come on, come on Reaching out to you so take a chance staff at school are always only one call away. If you ever need us, all you need to do is ask and we're always there for you. Okay, have a super duper day. See you soon.